Hey there, Storm fans. It is Brent Cook, and today we're playing a deck that can only be described as Nick Fit meets Hulk Flash. You heard me correctly. I never thought that I'd be uttering that sentence in my entire life, but that's the truth. It is Jelly, Eggs, and Bacon from our friend Manuel. And the entire idea behind this deck is that we want to get Protean Hulk in play. I know it's a crazy thought that we're trying to hard cast Protean Hulk. There's no flash in this deck, unfortunately. And it's not running anything like, uh, why can't it, Pattern of Rebirth to put the Hulk into play. So instead, we're doing it the hard way, where we're looking to just pay the honest 7 mana on Protean Hulk and then sacrifice it using Cabal Therapy, Vasara Seer, or this Carrion Feeder. And then from there, we execute the Hulk Flash combo, which you might remember is that it allows you to get converted mana cost 6 or less. So the first time, you get Body Double plus a Sacrifice Creature. And then you Body Double the Protean Hulk, you sack the Hulk again, you go get Revelark plus um, the Cauldron Familiar and a Carrion Feeder or something. And if you happen to have a piece in your hand, you're always welcome to get Body Snatcher in the middle somewhere to get that out so that way you don't get stuck with cards in your hand. But you don't really need the Body Snatcher um, to win the game. And eventually, you end up flickering your opponent infinitely with Cauldron Familiar, Revelar combo with Body Double. So that's the idea. You end up looping these. It's a lot of clicking. Honestly, I'm not looking forward to it. I sort of hope that a lot of our opponents concede. Ideally, I do it once to show everyone how it works, and then it just never happens again, but we'll find out. Um, and then the rest of the deck is just sort of the supporting cast. So you can use Lion's Eye Diamond to help fuel the um, Transverse the Uvenwald. So that way you can accelerate into the Protean Hulk. It can also discard pieces in your hand, which is pretty helpful. But in general, um, it's tough to make it work. You can, in theory, also double Lion's Eye Diamond, Summoner's Pact, and then you would need like a land drop to Protean Hulk and then like flashback of ball therapy. It's possible. It's just pretty unlikely to turn one with this deck, but it's theoretically there. And we are a veteran explorer deck, so there's six basics. Calling the weak to sacrifice the veteran veteran explorer that's pretty much living the dream. Uh, I think the only thing that I wish that this deck had was a single copy of Elvish Spirit Guide for the Summoner's Pact. Because there's going to be a lot of games where we're, we're looking to get up to 7 mana, or to play around days, it seems like one ESG somewhere in the list would be kind of a no-brainer. But Manuel, who is the deck expert, not me, uh, this is my first time ever playing this deck, has decided against it. I'm sure they've considered before they're an intelligent person, so I trust their judgment, but that's my in initial thought at least. And then here we have a sideboard. Uh, obviously, Thought Seasons for combo matchups, Leyline for Graveyard Hate. I mean, this sideboard's just very straightforward. Carpet of Flowers and Veil for blue decks, Wolf for opposing copies of Leyline, and then Abrupt Decay. So, Manual was nice enough to ship along a sideboard guide, which a lot of people don't do, so today I will be boarding correctly for once. How about that? It's pretty wild. And uh, I hope that we crush. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm sure you will. And I will see you in match number one. Let's do this for manual. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for some Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts.
Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to the first match. Jelly, Eggs, and Bacon. Pretty wild. Um... I mean, I think we're supposed to keep this. This Transverse the Uvenwald can eventually go get... Um, a Protean Hulk. So I think we just lead on turn one Thoughtseize. Turn two, we can go Veteran Explorer plus Carrion Feeder. Yeah, I mean, this seems like a keep to me. And that brings us up to five out of the seven mana we need. Okay, so we're ready to begin. And our opponent's taking a mulligan. Let's punish them with this Thoughtseize. Reanimator. So they're looking to spike a land, and with that they have Entomb, Reanimate, everything all in one package. Um, if they have a basic swamp, they can get it with the Veteran Explorer, which punishes us pretty badly. So if I take the Entomb, they can't get a creature to the graveyard without the Unmask or Thoughtseize. I guess they have a lot of ways. Um, I think we just take the Dark Ritual. And pass the turn. And they're going to unmask us pitching Thoughtseize. I don't even know what the right pick is here. <laughs> is it Carrion Feeder? That gives them a land if I stupidly decide to sacrifice the Explorer. And they took the Explorer. They must not want free lands. Draw. Okay, didn't really need that. Um... Let's play the feeder. So we have sorcery, creature, land, artifact. So next turn we can go get the Hulk. We'll have to sacrifice the pedal to do it, but it's an option. And another unmasked pitching cabal therapy. Okay. Draw. That might have been a win. Um, no, we would have been one mana short of a win. Okay, can we draw Hulk off the top? I, I, actually, Hulk off the top doesn't do it because I'd have to get rid of my sacrifice outlet. I guess there's no real reason to hang on to this Vista and I should just use it. All right, they drew Petal. So they have Entomb Live now. All right, so let's just fetch the thin. Need to find a protean hulk. A little awkward. Um, might as well play it. Okay, so summoner's pact would win the game. Um, and I think a traverse would as well. We have seven hits. Drawing the protean hulk itself is a little bit awkward because... I'd have to sacrifice the Carrion Feeder, and then I couldn't sacrifice the Hulk. All right, so they have a Grief here that's not going to matter. All our opponent needs to do is draw a land. <laughs> so they've been running a little bit unlucky. Another Calling the Weak. Jeez. Get in there. They're just passing. Their luck has not been good this game. Like, I don't think a land was an unreasonable ask out of them. All right, get in. Aaron Feeder has dealt five damage. Oh, they hit it. The, I imagine they get Gristlebrand here. They could get Archon, but why? What is that? Oh, it's the EDH card. 
sure. In my opinion, that's just worse than uh, putting Russell Brand into play. All right, they have 10 cards, unmask, sure. Okay. Hulk, um, that Elshorn is going to be good games. Hulk, Traverse or Summoner's Pact. That was not good enough. Um, let's therapy them. We'll say Exhume. Enemy dead. Yeah, I have to try to discard the Elish or the uh, the enemy deads, or else the Elishor means that I can't win. Enemy dead. Pass the turn. So they can brutality me here, um, but. I don't know if that does a whole lot outside of making sure if I draw the Hulk, I can't cast it, but my sacrifice outlet's dead now. So actually, am I just dead in the water? Um, I might be. Because even if I draw Summoner's Pact, I can't sacrifice it. But I think I'm just dead. And I drew a land anyway. So that hurt. Uh, we're going to go to game two. Yeah, turn nine, and we got 244 cards left in deck. Not the best luck, but we'll bounce back. We have these four ley lines. We probably want the thought seizes. Um, yeah, let's check out that handy dandy cyborg guide we were given. It says to take out thought seize and abundant harvest. So it looks like this is a matchup where you don't side in thought seize. You actually just leave it out. Interesting. And then abundant harvest. Okay. I would not have guessed that. I probably could have figured out the Abundant Harvest part, but I would have thought you wanted Thoughtseize. The more you know. And let's submit. Game 2, we're on the play against Reanimator. And this hand has the Hulk. But honestly, this is just too slow. Uh, we're going to mold the ley line here. And there we have one. Um, the rest of this hand kind of stinks, though. <laughs> Um, I mean, is this a keep? I don't know. I think you're supposed to get rid of the body snatcher. Ooh, if I draw a black source, I can. Hold on. We could re we could reanimate the Ave. But never mind. Ave requires it to be cask for the storm trigger. So yeah, we're supposed to get rid of the body snatcher. I think. I don't know. Maybe this hand, like, am I supposed to just go to five? This hand stinks. I'm going to put the Ava on the bottom. I just don't see myself ever hard casting it with this hand. At least with it on the in, in our deck, I can, like, theoretically sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond to help cast it. Fully line into play. All right, pass the turn. Our hand doesn't do anything, but we'll see how it goes. Interesting. It's beat down feeder time. They drew a swamp. Unmask me, probably taking body snatcher or a ritual. I don't know. It doesn't I guess those are the only options, but it doesn't really matter. And they exile the reanimate. Check the calling the week. Dark ritual. Feed the Swarm. That was not a card I was expecting. Looks like we're in trouble here. We're pretty far away, too. And they got Archon of Cruelty. Um. Yeah, they. I mean, they got me. I can't do anything about it. Playline not good enough. Okay. So we're going to sacrifice the carrion feeder, I guess. The body snatcher. We're just dead. Yep. 
Jeez Louise. Okay. We're just dead. I'm going to concede. It doesn't matter. We can't win before this Archon would kill us because it's a nine point swing. So uh, next turn I can go up to four mana while giving them two lands. So they'll attack. I'll sacrifice the uh, the Veteran Explorer. We'll have four lands. They'll have four lands. Uh, so they only have one card though. But on my turn I get one draw and it has to be good or else it gets discarded. And I can't get Hulk into play before I would die. So it is what it is. We lost round number one to Reanimator, even with the ley line, which is kind of a bummer. Oh well. I'll see you in match number two. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Welcome to match number two. We're on the play. Hopefully we get to execute the combo this time. And here we have a pretty slow hand. I don't think we're allowed to keep this despite having the Summoner's Pact for Hulk. All right, we've opened up the Ave again. I wonder if this is a hand where we can maybe ooze combo. Uh, so we would Veteran Explorer off of a Petal. Therapy, we go up to three. We're Ritual Short. So I'm going to bottom the harvest and I'm just going to lead off on Cabal Therapy on Force of Will. So that way on turn two, I don't have to pay this uh, therapy cost, assuming that I drew a dark ritual or I think even a land. So we're going to try to slime time here and we're going to name Force of Will. Painter. And uh, the Karn Menace. I think if I... Veteran Explorer, I'm going to be dead. Because <laughs> uh, they just have Painter Grindstone already. Well, I guess I can name the Painter Servant. Um, did that do it? I believe it does. Because they chose not to play the Painter. Auto Yield. Yeah, so I have to at least get one forest here. Okay, and now I'll name Painter Servant. Get out of here. And now Storm 3, Storm 4, and Storm 5 is the ooze, which is exactly 20, by the way. Fun fact. This is a turn 2 hardcast slime time. That seems pretty good. Maybe this deck, instead of just being eggs and bacon, should be all jelly. If you read uh, Manuel's primer on MTG The Source, I'll, I'll actually put that in the description down below as well. Uh, Manuel goes over why it's called uh, Jelly, Eggs, and Bacon. Jelly is Ave, and then Eggs and Bacon is uh, Protean Hulk. I don't completely understand it, and I lived through the Flash era. So this might be some sort of inside joke. Sorry, Manuel, I'm not trying to badmouth your deck here, but it's a terrible name. Uh, but, I mean... That was pretty sweet. I really liked uh, casting the Ave. And uh, yeah, it's hard not to love Ave. I'm just not really for these silly deck names that were really popular when I was a kid. Uh, for example, like Mono White Control was called Rabid Wombat. Uh, it's just silly and I don't enjoy it. So I'm the wrong audience. That's not who I am. All right, so Painter. Do we think Painter is on the cyborg guide? Let's search and find out. It is. So we want three abrupt decay and one wilt. Okay. And two thought seas, two abundant harvest. I find that pretty weird that we board out thought seas. Like thought seas seems pretty good here. Like I'm gonna have to trust their judgment, but um seems a little bit off to me. Game two versus painter. 
Uh, if we draw land, this is a theoretical turn one. Right? No, I don't have a Cabal Therapy. I would need Cabal Therapy. It is a theoretical turn one Ave, and then you can't pay for Summoner's Pact and you get murdered. Uh, that is uh, a truth. I think we have to ship this. It was close to being a turn one. Okay. I think we keep this and we bottom uh the ritual. So it's a little bit awkward that we don't have a sacrifice outlet. Sure you have a welder. Um Yeah. So there's our sack outlet. So, do I play the Explorer first? Probably. You could traverse for a swamp, but there's also a chance we just draw the swamp. Mountain. Okay, draw. Another Summoner's Pact. So... I think I'm supposed to traverse here. Play the feeder. Did I just miss out on a kill? Sorry, I need to think through this now if I just missed it. Uh, so we could have played Pulling the Weak, which essentially makes five mana. I, I guess it makes six mana. And then Lion's Eye Diamond packed. Yeah, I just missed a kill. Okay, we'll have to try it for our next turn. I missed it. Uh, that's my own fault. That's a bummer. Ancient Tomb. Bridge. That card doesn't matter. We don't attack. Well, I guess we do. There's Aves in our deck. That's how we won game one, but not what we're looking to do here. Dark Ritual. Let's call that weak. We will have many black mana. Yes. Okay. So we don't even need this Lion's Eye Diamond anymore. Uh, but we might as well put it into play. Cast Summoner's Pact. I guess we could lose the Mind Break Trap, which is something I didn't consider. We'll get the Hulk. I guess I didn't realize that we only had one Hulk in the deck. Probably my own fault for not paying attention, but I thought we had more than just the one. Boy Hulk. Brent Cook wins the match. Woot woot. 1-1 one, one with Nick Fit meets Hulk Flash. Jelly, eggs, and bacon. All right, there's three more rounds left to go. Let's hope there's more of this and less of what happened in round one. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm Mini Token Pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for Grape Shot. Everyone's favorite Stormwind condition. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, four treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Ave Progenitor Ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right, we're on the play for the third match. Again, I believe that's three in a row. And here we've opened up a little bit of an odd hand. It doesn't really do anything. I think you're supposed to ship this. Uh, yeah, like all it does is make mana. 
And it doesn't even do that well because Lotus Petals are only initial mana source. We just have to ship that back. Uh, and this seems reasonable. We don't have a second sacrifice outlet, but we'll keep it. Our opponent tends to play a lot of goblins, but you never know. They could always switch or whatever. Grab that forest and player veteran. So we have the summoner's pact, which can get the, um, the Hulk other on curses. That's annoying. Um, but we still wouldn't have had a sack outlet. Get in there. Ley line. Yeah, pretty good against us. So realistically, we cannot win this game anymore. Because you can beat ley line with Ave, but the Trinisphere stops the Ave from working. Like, theoretically, if they didn't have this Trinisphere, we could just put Ave into play. Uh, I think I'm going to concede and not give our opponent any more information. We don't want them knowing that we're a, a Protean Hulk deck. So we we'll probably need these Wilts. Um, I doubt Curses is on their sheet, but let's type it in. They proved me wrong again. Two Wilt for two Abundant Harvest. Whoops, come back here, Traverse. And hit that submit button. Game two, we're on the play. Not a keep. It has wilt, but the rest of it's just not good. This is close. They took a mulligan to six. Keep and bottom the traverse. All right, so if I... F Actually, wait, hold on. I didn't think of this until now. Land, sorcery, artifact. It's only three. Damn. All right, sorry. Uh, for a second there, I thought that we could turn one Ave. Not true. Um, I think we just named Trinisphere. Chalice of the Void, Dark Ritual, Opposition Agent. Okay. I mean, that's a hand. There's no way that they're going to challenge for zero, right? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Unfortunately, we lose to the opposition agent or the chalice on one. So I think we're just done for here. Dark ritual, opposition agent, sure. Draw. That stops me from playing Eve. Maybe we just have to pass. And then now they play Saga into Chalice on one. Yep. Sure. Don't think we're going to win this game. All right, so we know Karn and two unknowns. Draw another swamp, pass the turn. Oh, we were very dead. I was like, maybe there's a chance if they um, miss their land to start making constructs, but it looks like they just had it all. Here's Karn. I'm sorry, Manuel. I'm picking it up. Uh, I am not a glutton for punishment. I know what I'm dead. So we are now one and two. That's okay. You know, maybe I'm not playing perfectly. Who knows? But two rounds left to go. Let's just try to win those. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Fourth time in a row, we're on the play. you love to see that. And uh, let's get another win. I'd like that. Our opponent's name is Second Seed Rhino, so hopefully they're not playing anything too degenerate. Eorian. So we have a Hulk. 
but no way of getting green mana for it, which is a little bit weird. I think we're supposed to ship this back. Hands are terrible. Like, what does this do? Yeah, this has to go back. We're going to five. Uh, I guess we keep this bottom revel arc, bottom calling the week. This looks like a TES hand for what it's worth. <laughs> this could definitely be a TES mulligan to five. Just looking to draw Wishclaw Talisman. All right, Vern, Petal, Diamond, Diamond. So you might be thinking, Bryant, why are you playing these out? Uh, you're losing Storm Count for your theoretical Ave. That is true. However, my username is Bryant underscore Cook. And against that username, people just chalice for zero out in the open. Like, does not matter. So I don't have that luxury of being able to hold them. Pass the turn. Using their one swept teeth. Tropical. Okay. Draw. Veteran Explorer. How lovely. Forest. Nothing like good old Nick Fit Storm, am I right? Hell yeah. I don't remember the original Veteran Explorer being a soldier, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, it's been a long time since I've played with Veteran Explorer. And for whatever reason, Card Hoarder gave me this one. Let me see if I can find the original. Don't show me the eroded one. I want to see a real one. Yeah, it's fixed on Card Hoarder. Just let me try, like, Scryfall or something. Sorry, I'm probably not doing a very good job commentating on what our opponent's doing. It was Summon Soldier, so that was the only creature type that I had, and I was wrong about that. So they added Human Scout. Draw. Another Veteran Explorer. Classic. Just some 1-1 one, one green beats. And let's get in there. Ooh. Attack. Are they getting uh, Dryad Arbor to accelerate? No, bummer. Ice Fang? Okay. So they'll block, and we both get a couple basics here. I'd say that it's a, a lose for us, because their deck can use mana right now with seven cards in hand, and we cannot. Okay. And another Ice Fang. All right, then. Goodbye, Lion's Eye Diamond. Not that that card mattered. Night of Autumn. Sure. Oh, no. My Lion's Eye Diamond. They don't do anything. Sure. Sylvan, you got it. Draw. Another Dark Ritual. Yeah, we're just getting buried here. Okay, going to 17 from the Ice Fang attack. Is this an Uro? Life from the Loam. Value. And here we have some Hanson, Umbop, Birds of Paradise. In your into hand, sure. Draw. Another Veteran Explorer. If both of these die, I don't even have enough lands to get. Okay, and the opponent shows us a black source would buy you. Alright, we fall to 16. 5 mana, 6 mana? 7 mana. Is this a green sun for 6? Oh my. It's prime time. We are getting absolutely demolished here. Field of the Dead. Okay. 
You got it. Draw. Therapy. So there's a slim chance we could win if I draw a way to get Hulk next turn. I mean, it's possible. Pretty unlikely, but it's possible. All right, they're moving to attack step. How much is actually coming in here? Uh, so 8, 14, 16, 18. So I think I'm going to have to block with both. And soak up the rest. So I go to 2 life, and I have to draw into something that finds me Hulk. Yes. Select our last two basics. So let's me. Come on. There we go. Okay. I will decline to search. Our opponent's Sylvan Library is hidden over here. Okay. Miracle top deck? Oh my. All right, let's uh, let's try this out. All right, they forced it. Odds Protein Hulk resolves roughly zero percent, but we're gonna cast it. Protein Hulk is about to be countered, and there it is. So unfortunately, we lost. Womp womp. We drew the one of though. I mean, that was kind of cool. So, Bant Zenith, that's got to be on there. Two Abrupt Decay. And as always, for two Abundant Harvest. The Abundant Harvest seems a little bit like Feller in here. But, uh, I trust them. I'm sure Abrupt Decay is pretty good against the deck that, uh, likely has Hate Bears or whatever. It's a little weird we're not bringing in Veil of Summer, in my opinion. Um, it seems like a card we want here, or Thoughtseize. But I'm not the expert. Like, if you're not boarding in Veil of Summer for the control decks, what are you doing? Game two, we're on the play. This hand doesn't really do anything. So we can traverse to go get a swamp. And eventually summon respect. We have decay, but like, having body double and familiar stinks. I think it's just a mulligan. Um, I guess we'll keep this. I think this deck might be a little bit better if it had like a reanimator sub theme or something. Just some way that you don't need to spend seven mana on Protean Hulk all the time. Because you're running a lot of discards, you could discard your, the Hulk out of your own hand and then reanimate it or something. You already lose the Graveyard Hate, so it's not like that changes. I guess if we draw a Lion's Eye Diamond, I could theoretically try to Aave and lose the Force. Did not shuffle. Draw. And another Traverse. I think I'm just going to pass here. Your Dane. Two on top. Sure. Okay, well, let's take a draw. Seer. I mean, it's something, I guess. Uh, let's go get a forest and cast this traverse to go get a land. I think I want extra green because we might be able to Aave them as a way of beating counter spells. I don't know why I didn't play my land first. Like, they're probably not a daze deck, but there's no reason not to play the land first. Ending. I'm going to sacrifice my creature. Yes, I would like to sacrifice it to itself and scry. So that theoretically does give me uh, a way to put Eve on the stack next turn. But I feel like I also get mega punished by a counter spell. Um, I don't know. All right, we're here to have some fun. Let's do it. 
Okay, so I can pay for the Summoner's Pact with this pedal, but if I get hit by a second ending, I just get really, really punished. Okay, so we have... We will have Delirium when the Traverse resolves. And they force the diamond. Um, so this is really awkward for me now. Because I burned the Dark Ret. And I can't cast Eve. Actually, hold on. I haven't played a land yet. And now I cast Summoner's Pact. And then this can cast the Eve. There we go, we found a line. Woot woot. Ugh. It's slime time. Love it. Also, shameless plug. If you need slime time tokens, we have them in our mini token pack. So check out the description down below that will link you to the Epic Storm shop where you can get your own Ave Progenitor Ooze tokens. Okay. They went for a small slime. They could have gotten an E8 slime. So they went for a 3 3. And they conceded. Slime time got the job done! Hell yeah. Um. I think we just submit. I'm not convinced that this is the proper board plan, by the way. Like, I think realistically you could board in Thought Seizes and Veil of Summer. But they said to only board in the two decay. Like I, I question having four sack outlets in your deck. You could probably shave one Viserysir and one uh, Carrion Feeder for at least two of the protection spells, and then like maybe shave two other cards for the um, the Veil of Summers. Like against these slow control decks, you don't need as much acceleration. So you could argue that like maybe you board out two diamond because they make you play into their counter magic or even all four of their lines at diamonds um, or the lines at diamonds. You know what I mean? I kept seven. And just doesn't do anything is the problem. Yeah, I'm going to ship this. We'll keep it in bottom of diamond. Trot pass. Ooh. All right, let's play out the veteran. Don't really want to thought seize into their open green mana anyway. Okay. Put in a growth. Into ending. You got it. All right, so we get to thought seize them here pretty safely. No fear of getting veiled. I think we're supposed to take the library. Stop them from getting too far ahead. I mean, I have this abrupt decay, but I think I'm supposed to keep that for a heap or later. And here comes the arrow. Okay, so we don't know one card in their hand. Yikes. We are not in a good spot. You're in the hand. Okay. Draw. I mean, I don't think I'm supposed to calling the week here, but I'd rather the green mana be untapped in play. If it does come up that I should uh, veteran explore or sacrifice the explorer. Okay. We have four cards in hand. The chip damage isn't going to matter, so I'm not going to attack because I don't want to play into their uh, quaddle. Brainstorm. Okay, they have four cards in hand. I, I have to imagine they're probably going to play Uro this turn. Maybe the Yorion, but the Uro just seems like the better choice. And here it is. And before they can possibly put a Karakas in a play off the Uro, I'm just going to kill it. And a Ponder. 
I guess if we drew um, Eve, we could hard cast it through the force. We have instant land. I mean, I might be able to get them to mess up here. Um, no, I, that doesn't work. I just have to draw a protection spell. Because there's no, there's not four force in the deck, so I can't make quadruple green without discarding my hand and putting myself weak to the uh, the force. I think Cabal Therapy might be our best draw at the moment. And Uro's back. Well, a different Uro is back. I'm not even sure if Ooze would race them at this point. But that could theoretically do it. Um, let's traverse. We would need this to resolve. This can get ooze. Hit force of negation. Yep. Okay. So assuming that resolved, I would have played Dark Ritual into Culling the Weak to then get the last forest, and then I could have played ooze. Green Sun for Titan again. Yep. Prime Time, the giant. Is Uro's creature type giant? It is. Okay. Tribal Giants. We're just getting crushed here. Draw. Body Double. Perfect. Um, we know that they have a force and a Yorian still in hand, but even if I drew the action spell, yeah, I think we're just mathematically dead here, but for the sake of manual, uh, being a wonderful contributor of this channel, I will sit here and just get murdered. Um, but we've lost this. We can't win before we would die. And now we take a bunch of damage. Oh yeah, super dead. So we're not going to die from this attack. I did the math before I said that. But we're not going to be able to beat that force. And now Yorion gets to flicker triple abundant harvest. So Ancestral Recall for free essentially. Uh, pretty good, pretty good. And now they come back at the end step and they trigger Yorion created the draw triggers with these abundant, uh, abundant harvests. Oh, I forgot about the, uh, the ice fang as well. So it was opportunity or tidings. All the lines coming out of the deck. And the final draw is the ball therapy. Womp womp. So we are one in three, not the end of the world. There's still another round of magic left to be played. Let's see if we can do that Nick Fit Holt Flash combo one more time. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. The fifth round, and unfortunately, we lost the die roll. We did not to go. We did not get to go five zero in die rolls. But we're facing Lincoln Baxter, Legacy Stalwart, and unfortunately, we cannot keep this hand. We just have to ship it back. For those of you that are unaware, Lincoln created Top Decked, the app that does pairings and so much more. If you're interested, definitely go check out Top Deck or Top Deck. Um, sorry. And uh, I used it when I went to a lot of Star City Games events. Really useful app. But it does a whole lot more than that. You can put your collections in there. Gives you prices. There's a whole slew of things. So definitely go check that out. And uh, this body double is glued to our hand. I think I'm supposed to ship this one back as well. All right. We're going to five. Okay. So I think we can get rid of the Explorer and the Familiar. Blue to Delta. Draw. 
Dark Ritual. Lincoln would have never expected Veteran Explorer out of me. Mwahahaha. Okay. Draw. Uh, I think that means we can put a Hulk on the stack. But I don't know what that actually does. Because I can't sacrifice it. So... I can go Petal, Dark Ritual, Pulling the Weak, Floating, 2 Black. I would go up to 6 Black. I can hard cast it, but it doesn't do literally anything else. And I would die to the pack trigger if they can blow up my diamond. I think I just have to pass here. So you might be thinking, Brian, what about Ave? Ave has the same fatal flaw of that you die to an abrupt decay on Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay. So for what it's worth, Lincoln plays a very controlling uh, bug depth stack that has fluster storms. I don't remember if it had forces in it or not. Uh, that's not good. Uh, maybe that allows us to sacrifice it, though. So let's count. So... This brings us up to six black plus three lands. Yeah, that does it, assuming our opponent doesn't have any interaction whatsoever. Um, let's try it. Going the weak. Yes, I would like to search. Forest swamp. Is my cloning the weak resolve, Lincoln? Baxter the third. Esquire. All right, so we're going to cast this Summoner's Pact. Okay, we're going to get that Protean Hulk. Play the Diamond. I'm sure the pauses aren't that Lincoln's thinking about the play. I'm sure it's like, what is Bryant playing? Um, which, you know, not everyone like follows that closely in like the Brewers areas of the internet. I've actually seen jelly eggs and uh, bacon before, but I also scour for weird stuff to play and for videos, so uh, you never know. And you can't counterspell that. So I think we actually get to execute the Hulk combo here. All right, so we get six mana worth of stuff. Six or less. We want body double and... Seer. Okay, so now Body Double comes in as a copy of Fortean Hulk. Okay, we're going to sacrifice a creature in Scry 1. We're going to sacrifice this Protean Hulk. And let's yield to this trigger. So now we get Revel Arc. Carrion Feeder Cauldron Familiar. No, undo that. I'm sorry, we can only get Cauldron from earlier. My bad. Um, we'll auto yield here. Okay, and now we get our Scry trigger. That can go on the bottom. Okay, so now we sacrifice the familiar. Um, that can go on the bottom. And we sacrifice Rebel Arc. We'll get back Body Double. Familiar. Okay. Lincoln's going to respond. Hmm. Might as well sacrifice it to itself. I can go on the bottom. So if I get Revel Arc, I don't have a sack outlet, but something I could do is get Protean Hulk and just have a big dumb beater. Um, or I can pray to rip a sack outlet. So I think I probably messed this up at some point, but I'm not sure if that's even true. I, like, I think there was another loop I could have done with the body double. Like, I could have went and got Body Snatcher plus another one of these, so that way I had two sack outlets the whole time. 
Let's just get the Hulk. And that can go in the bottom. And now I have to be able to pay the pack trigger. Uh, so that's a little bit awkward. So if there's a second copy of Abrupt Decay, I'm dead. Okay, so... I'm going to add three green with this diamond. And then tap a forest. Draw. Okay, cast the button and harvest. Non-land. Unfortunate. So... I think we just get in there. If there's a crop rotation for Dark Depths here, I'm actually one point short of racing it. There it is. So I'm going to need to draw a Sacrifice Outlet to race this. Okay, Merit Lodge has entered the battlefield. I think this loss might be my fault because there was another loop I could have done with the bo uh, the Body Snatcher. It's somewhere in the middle there that would have been able to beat um, an Abrupt Decay, I think. Right, we need a Sack Outlet. That might have done it. Um, let's get in there. What is this? Okay, the blocks, damage. So they're at one. Force of Will is shut off. Traverse. Get the Seer. Okay, let's sacrifice the Hulk. No! Nimble obstructionist, I've been, <laughs> I've been gotten. Oh, what a blowout. Why don't I have a food? Uh, yeah, that was a nail biter. Damn. Ah. Okay, they got me. Nimble obstruction is way too strong. Way too strong. Uh, what do we do here? I can't imagine that this deck is on the uh, the cyborg guide. Well, the word bug isn't on there anywhere. Uh, we'll, we'll try depths. And there's only green-white depths, so they don't have Golgari depths. Uh... Jeez. Well, I think we probably want some Thoughtseize. They got these Abundant Harvests. But I think we probably need a Board and Bolt for Leyline. You know, let's try Shaving 2 Diamond. Alright, Game 2. This seems pretty reasonable. Let's keep it. Okay, so we're going to grab our Swamp and Thoughtseize. That Wasteland doesn't do anything. Um, we're going to take the Obstructionist to just prove a point here. Okay. Go get a Forest. Well, Therapy say Leable. um no i should be baleful i think so no depths yet but we did give them stage i think i'm supposed to wait so we have sorcery land right now even with creature i don't have delirium creeping tar pits we got to know the draw stop summoners packed Okay, so yes, we'll grab double forest. We're going to name the Leobold here. Okay, go get that last basic. Okay, and now we have a, oh no, I'm sorry, some, uh, I forgot. We don't have a win next turn. 
Um, I was thinking we did, but we actually don't. Because I forgot that Protean Hulk costs 7 and not 6. So I need to draw a mana next turn. That isn't a land. Okay, and there it is. So we need our opponent to have drawn a dud. All right, we'll go get the uh, the Hulk again. And they drew an abrupt decay. Nope, okay. They're bluffing. Okay, so here we get body double plus a second outlet. Okay, that goes in the bottom. Back the Hulk. Revel arc. Aldrin familiar. Okay. Auto yield. Okay, sacrifice the. It's better to put them on the feeder so at the end of this we can have just like a giant dumb creature. So we're just gonna get these two. Always yield. Rebel arc. All right. So we just have to click through this a million times. Okay. All right. Like this just takes infinite clicking, and I need to make sure I'm not messing up. And for some reason, the auto yield just like isn't remembering. Even though I'm clicking to save targets on these, it's not working. Okay, they were nice and conceded. Lincoln didn't have to do that, but... Whew. So we got to do the thing at least twice this league. <laughs> and now we're going into game number three. We managed to get this third game. We will get 50 play points back, which is better than zero. So I'm hoping that I win. Game three against the Lincoln Baxter. And I don't think this hand is a keep. This doesn't do anything. So we have to ship it back for six. I guess we try this bottoming the familiar. We can in theory turn one Eve. That is a possibility. And then promptly uh, lose the game on our upkeep. Just throwing that out there. It's an option. Okay, draw. Durian Feeder. Not what the doctor ordered. I'm just going to pass the turn here. Okay. Draw. Reverse. That gets a swamp. And let's Thought Seize. No green mana equals no Veil of Summer. Brainstorm. A little bit of a bummer there. Ending in Life from the Loam. Well, I'm not going to discard Life from the Loam. That's for sure. So I wouldn't be shocked if we lost, if the top card is the Nimble Obstructionist. Just throwing that out there. Revel Arc. Um, I think we just play the Feeder. Opposition Agent. That's annoying. Yeah, so I don't know how we win this now. Yikes. This Wilt feels real good right now. I was worried about Ley Lines because Lincoln has played Ley Line in the past and maybe he's moved on. I'm not sure, but it's a little bit embarrassing that this Wilt cannot destroy an uh, opposition agent like Abrupt Decay can. Another choice instead of Wilt would be uh, Assassin's Trophy. It's a little bit more versatile. It's also good against Depths combo. So that might be better than Wilt. Okay. Not looking good for the home team here. Is it time to... Oh no, I can't beat down with the Revel Arc. Stupid bird. I guess I can Wilt the bird. All right, we're, we'll see if they'll trade. I think my life total might be too low for me to win the race with Revelark. Like, I've already taken too many hits. 
But maybe they can't attack into the Rebel Arc. Like, maybe they won't try to trade the opposition agent, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Look at that. Thick, flying, elemental bird thing. Hell yeah. Probably not F6. Ooh. Saying that I'm not afraid, I'm going to attack. I respect it. Okay, so we know one of the cards still in their hand is Life from the Loam. I wonder if they have the Obstructionist, if that's why they swung. But I can't beat Obstructionist anyway, so there's no point in like me thinking about not attacking. Alright, so now one of the cards in their hand is a Delta. Diamond. Or the Delta, so they have one unknown. Like I said, if it's Obstructionist, I can't afford to play around it anyway. Ooh. The bummer is that with this Life from the Loam, they're going to get the Threshold for the Cabal Pit. Alright, so we're going to take four down to seven. Maybe I was supposed to bolt there. That was a mistake. I was thinking about doing it on their end step so that way they can't double pit me. Like I was like that wasn't an accident. Like this entire time they have six cards in their graveyard, so I don't want to bolt the baleful strix, giving them threshold. From there they can activate the pit on my revel arc. Life from the loam, activate pit on revel arc. Okay, they played another delta. Alright, I need to draw a blocker. There we go. I guess the blocker dies to Cabal Pit, but whatever. If I win a match through Revel Arc attacks, I will be so thrilled. <laughs> okay. So they fetch here with Delta, that puts them to six. It's not entirely free. But it would give them Threshold for the Cabal Pet. Okay, now it's our opponent's turn. They're going to Dredge Life from the Loam. So they're at six cards once again. If they cast Life from the Loam and don't pick up the Wasteland, that puts them to seven. If they just activate the Delta, that also puts them to seven cards in Graveyard. If they're going to allow me the block, I am going to do that. And then sacrifice this to put a counter on my carrion figure. So now they're in a spot where they need to think about if they want to fetch with polluted delta and then use the cabal pit on feeder. But I don't even think they really need to do that because they can just respond to um, another creature that would enter the battlefield because I'm not going to sacrifice the rebel arc. And they're going to kill the feeder. Sure. So I'm going to take one here going to six. Okay. So our opponent can life from the loom back just the Cabal Pit and have it active on my turn. But it looks like they're choosing... Oh no, they could do two, my bad. They can pit and then only take two from this attack step. I'm kind of hoping that they don't and that they save it. And then next turn I can wilt the Baleful Strix. And then if they use pit, it's exactly lethal. Okay. Pass. Ah, uh, that goddamn nimble obstructionist. Ah. Uh. That was the last card in their hand the whole time. <laughs> oh. Damn. The one damage last turn mattered from the Strix. I guess this Obstructionist would have wrecked my Revel Arc at some point. Okay, they got me. Uh, so we went one and four, but this league was pretty fun. I enjoyed myself. Um, yeah, so why don't we go back and look at the deck list. So I do think there probably needs to be an Elvish Spirit Guide in here somewhere. Like these Abundant Harvests are just boarded out every round. Just cut them and play something else. But also I think the core of the deck 
the idea that you need to ramp to seven mana every single game is just a lot. Um, so something you could look at doing instead is not playing Lion's Eye Diamonds and just be a Pattern of Rebirth deck. Like, play a bunch of Pattern of Rebirth, so you have a bunch of Sacrifice Outlets already, put one on a Veteran Explorer, put the Hulk into play. Like, it just seems so much more simple than what we're trying to do here. Um, but, I don't know. Not my deck, not my call. Um, and then I would like to see Assassin's Trophy over the Wilt. And then maybe just reconsider how you're boarding, I guess, because this deck leaves in so much mana post-board versus the control decks and leaves, it boards out Thoughtseize and then doesn't bring in Veils. Like, I don't know. It seems a little bit off to me. Also, against, like, Bant Control, you're not supposed to board in Carpet. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm just not understanding the deck fully because I'm not its creator, which is also entirely possible. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.